we'll begin by connecting to our deep Ujjaya breath. Expanding the ribs and gently growing the skull bones away from the sit bones. There, that interior space is coming back to us. So as we begin our practice today, we'll be going in and discovering the core as it pertains to the, to the heart. And maybe we take a moment breathing to feel core, to feel heart, just establishing a baseline sensitivity, a baseline state of body, state of mind. This is purely subjective. So our pranayama today, we'll begin with some kapalabhati. Uh, kapalabhati is most appropriate if you are not pregnant, just a reminder. And so if you are pregnant or think that you might be, just got to put that little warning in there. We've got to do some other pranayama. So here we go. Kapalabhati, short, sharp exhalations. The nasal exhalation, that's the exit point. The low belly is, in a sense, an origin or an engine point. So let's begin. We'll do about 50, 60 pumps. Here we go. Sitting back just a little bit into those sit bones will help you feel that wash of breath up the low back. It may even possibly help us feel that it through the back, the brain. Yeah, so that, that posture to me has a lot of a lot of say in how I'll experience the breath. After those pumps, we're going to do a few rounds of bromery. So we're going to get some, some hum, some buzzes going. Deep inhalation. And when you reach the very tippy top of that inhalation, inhale a little bit more because it's probably in there. Now the entire exhalation is sound. of Bromery.
for these few, those four deep breaths. Yeah, exactly. Resume your Ujjaya breath. Sound is one of these really cool, sneaky ways that we, in fact, change the, the gas chemistry. Affecting our blood vessels. Buzzing the tubules of the cells. So just note how that feels. Great. And let's set up for a uh, half lotus seated spinal twist. I'm starting with my left foot on top of my right leg. Okay. And if you need a strap or anything, you can uh, get one by me. All right, just preemptively, I'm going to wrap up my left foot. So as we reach our left hand behind our back. So just pick up either foot or strap. Okay. The right hand can go to the left leg. Now the nice thing is, even though my hands are set on my legs, I don't have to necessarily, each time, use my hands in a pulling action. And that can be kind of nice, especially if you have a tender um, spine area. I know there might be one or two of us working with some, with some strains around the ribs. So you might want to just ease off of the, uh, the arm pull in your twist. Let breath, let your intrinsic support and strength move you into the twist. let those ribs heal. And we're reaching the sit bones or tailbone gently down. So we give ourselves a sense of the bottom most of our core, our physical body, our core. Aligning the skull bones over those sit bones. We're just exploring feeling breath through that whole interior, kind of column-like or tube-like Release, inhaling back to center. We'll keep the left leg over the right. Just wiggle it over so we're in knee pile. Inhale, reach the arms out to the side. And eagle, exhaling, hooking the right elbow over the left. Yeah, right over left. Blinking fingertips. Now with the feet active, inhale into upper back. Lifting the back of the heart away from the sit bones. Exhaling, feeling the back of the brain lighten away from the back of the heart. These initial moves, like these twists, these neck moves that we often put forward in our practice, a 
are here to help us get a sense of the, the state of our spine. Some of the tones and the qualities that we find around our heart, our brain, our pelvis. slow things way down, bring our caring, loving awareness to bear in our body, and we work with our breath, we feel our breath, we notice with our breath, we sense with our breath. And inhaling, unwind arms and legs. We switch sides, so when we recross our legs, we're right over left for seated spinal twist. If half lotus isn't agreeable on your knees, of course we've got cross-legged. So my right hand can pass behind back. I'm just grabbing the easiest, nicest things. I don't have to crank, I don't have to pull. Okay. Inhaling, expand ribs, telescoping them up away from the hips. And exhaling, we'll turn to our right. And to unwind, here we go. So inhale, exiting the twist part, keeping that right leg over left stack. Now just nudging that leg over, more into knee pile. Exhaling, we'll go left over right, eagle. Get a sense of that space in your body right between the spine and the back of the heart. And as you're getting a sense, a breath sense of that area, okay, you're inhabiting that area. You're living in that area. And so we can get a, get a feel for what else lives in that area. <laughs> we feel the quality of breath in that back of heart. <laughs> I'll adjust that. If you feel any tones or textures, there you go. <laughs> A 
and get a sense of weight, heaviness, lightness. And that kind of information speaks to quality of energy, right? So it's okay if it feels heavy there. It's okay if it feels really kind of light. It's okay if it feels tenuous. But just noticing how, what it's like to inhabit these various areas of our body. On your next inhalation, let's unwind the arms, the legs, and we'll lie on our back. I love on this sacrum and belly. So we'll start with the feet off the ground, knees over the hips. Inhale the head, the shoulders off the ground. <laughs> Pause right there and locate the tip of the tailbone. So either I can imagine that, sense that, or I can curl that. Exhale, reach the left leg out. Now as I'm reaching out through the leg, I'm drawing the low belly down. So kind of contrary motions there. Inhale, bend that left knee. And keep reaching up through those elbows. Find the tailbone or curl the tailbone. Just locate yourself in the bottom of the pelvis, exhaling the right leg out. And as I move the mass of my right leg away from the pelvis, I pull the low belly down away from my right leg. Here we go. Inhale, bend that right knee. Let's do many more. Curl tailbone, exhale, left leg reaches. Belly moves down away from my kneecaps. Get totally empty. You can usually pull the belly down a little bit more. Inhale, bend left knee. Curling tailbone, exhale, right leg reaches. And I encourage you, use the low belly to exhale. And use that low belly. There's one more deeper movement we can often get. It's like the exhale after the exhale. Inhale, bend that right knee. Curling tailbone, exhale, left leg out reaches. Use the low belly. Now we're keeping the shoulders up as we're doing this. And then there's that exhale after the exhale, pulling it way, way down. Inhale, bend that left knee. By keeping the shoulders up, we get a little more, a little diaphragmatic support. Curl tailbone, exhale, left leg, or pardon me, right leg reaches out. Okay. So this is a little more work to breathe like this, shoulders up. And we draw that low belly down, way down. Good. Now when we inhale, bending the right knee, let's do three more on each side. Three more. And that little exhale after the exhale. <laughs> that can help us find a few more low belly regions around the hip, those obliques, organs. There you go. And if you start getting a little warm, that's fantastic.
Home sweet home. And hopefully that is one of the outcomes, is we get so skillful at being friendly toward ourselves, toward our body, toward our experience, that every time we sense the body, it's a genuine homecoming. Like, ah, oh yeah, yeah, I like this body. <laughs> And that may be a process. Let's find the roll or the block, whichever you have, whichever you'd be willing to squeeze with your inner thighs. And lying, we'll get that roll between the legs. All right, so we've got a thing between our legs, <laughs> and we've got our legs skyward. Inhaling into low back, so we get that practice and that sense of keeping the back on the ground. This is really a this is a good move for lots of us. I always squeeze that roll. Exhale. Float the head and the shoulder blades off the ground. Just a little bit is all we need. Now check down in that low back. It's still connected to the ground. And here we draw the belly down and the low belly is, uh, pardon me, the low back is still connected to the ground. Set the head down. Inhale. Feel that low back stay connected to the ground. And this is going to be the aim as we do this. Hold that breath. Hold the back to the ground, squeeze legs into that object. Find that tip of tailbone, exhale, head and shoulder blades off the ground. Now feel both halves of the back on the ground. As you squeeze, as you draw the low belly down. Now one half of your back may feel different than the other. Setting the head down, inhale. Helping that breath reach the low back. It's flush to the earth. Squeeze, squeeze the thing, curl the tailbone. Exhale the head and the shoulder blades off the ground. Now keep feeling the back. The back is on the ground. As you're drawing the low belly muscles, as you're drawing them down, the exhale after the exhale. Inhaling, set the head down, the back Days on the ground. So you have to guide your breath there. A little intra-abdominal pressure with that. Squeeze the thing. Locate the tip of the tailbone. You don't even have to move it. Just feel it. Find it. Exhale. Head and shoulder blades off the ground. Increase that squeeze of the roll. Stretch the legs up. Even if they don't straighten, pull low belly down. Inhaling, set the head down. Abdomen helps breathe the back to the ground. There's just two more. If that's helpful to you, squeeze the roll. Exhale the head and the shoulder blades up. Now lift both legs away from the ground. Pull the low belly down toward the ground. And good news, the last one is on your own, please. Complete this last one. Go. <laughs> there it is. Breathing into our abdomen, our back, and our pelvis is crucial. It's crucial to our hips, spinal stability. Accessing, inhabiting our, our lower body. And of course, you can remove that roll, setting it off to the side. Okay. Now, block can be nearby as we set up for bridge. 
Okay, so set the feet up hip width apart. Fingertip distance away. So if you reach the fingertips down, you can just skim the heels. And now inhale, grow the chest away from the hips. And exhaling, shift the tailbone toward the sky, the buttock lifts, the spine lifts, and we are entering bridge. At any time, you may insert that block under your sacrum for bridge. It becomes a nice reminder if you tend to feel your hips lower. It'll just keep us working at a certain elevation. Now, taking the thumb and the forefinger, we'll wrap it around the hip. So one hand over each hip or waist area. I'm issuing a pressure. Inhale, my hands press the hips as I lift the chest toward my face. Now exhaling, I'm imagining a little bit of that inner leg prop as if I'm squeezing it so I'm engaging both inner legs. I just feel, do both inner legs chime, chime on in this twist, or uh, pardon me, bridge? The way the legs are engaging, the backs of the legs and the buttock, even if they're kind of warm or getting a little burny, <laughs> are those leg muscles helping to decompress and support the low back? Or does this bridge feel like it's clustering up the low back? The unclustering move is where I use the backs of my legs, all that muscle, all that strength, and I shift the tailbone as if at my kneecap. Yep, that's it. That's it. That's it, Marissa. That's it. And that little shift makes the legs work a certain way, and the low back can be freer. And when you have that leg support and that spinal freedom or relative spinal freedom, connect deeply to your ujjaya breath, washing that breath up through the, the core of your person. You're feeling your breath. Can you feel your breath? Washing across the low back, the mid back, the upper back, there you go. So especially if we've grown accustomed to using the top most structures for breathing like our neck, our shoulders, our upper back, this can be a wonderful new discovery and challenge. Like, ooh, I can breathe in and with my pelvis. Here it is, there it is. Mm-hmm. Good. Another little shift tailbone. There it is. Hands are still pressing. You can relax them just to give the wrist a break. Here it is. That's really cool as we're getting that breath all the way up in the air. Yes. Half Varasana. So right hand, scoop that right ankle, drawing it back, back toward your right shoulder. Now what may occur is I grab the ankle and I draw it back a little bit. I might draw it back and my 
toes and the sole of my foot get a stretch. Or I might get the top of the right foot on the ground. But I want you to get that tailbone shift in this half virasana. So my left heel, my left midfoot is pressing into the earth and my tailbone, I'm shifting at my kneecaps, right between my kneecaps. You're welcome. Connect to your deep ujjaya breath. Some of what we experience is that quad, that thigh tension or tightness, can also be connected up the front of our body, so our abdomen. So if we get into this position, we feel, hear, notice our, a change in our breath. That's interesting. So keep that breath online. Okay. I'm going to switch sides so that right foot can go back to the ground. And again, I do that little tailbone shift so that when I draw my left foot back with my left hand, it's as nice as I can possibly be for my low back. I don't mind if my thighs feel some snugness or my legs work. I would much rather my legs work and, s and support me than just rumple up my low back. Those really deep ujjaya breaths, having put our leg, our foot in this position, can you breathe into the abdomen? Can you feel your breath in the pelvis? There we go. Those changes of breathing that we sometimes encounter in the poses, like I'm breathing, I'm breathing, all of a sudden I'm not breathing, hmm. contains a lot of information. Contains information about how our body is interpreting or perceiving the moment, this experience. Let's release that left foot back to the ground. Both feet planted. Shift the tailbone toward the kneecap so you raise off that block a little bit. And then we'll move that block off to the side. Please begin your descent starting with the upper back. And feel the mid back follow the upper back all those little segments of spine. You also feel those places where the segments feel kind of connected all together. Take note where you feel the, the multi-segmental connections. That'd be an interesting place to explore, perhaps. There we go. Oh, legs, sweet legs. Let's turn on to a side and we'll get ready for dolphin, our fave. Okay. So again, if, if you tend to be, to have that pattern of breathing with the neck and the upper back and the chest, this is great. We are thoroughly about to occupy our shoulders <laughs> and our upper back and our neck and our chest. So in a sense, kind of by flustering our, our usual pattern, maybe we feel ourselves breathing differently in the body. 
well, set the forearms out in front. So I really do want this structure of the shoulder in service of the pose holding me up. So I'm going to tweeze the chest muscles on. And as I push the earth, those armpit, those side armpit muscles turn on, the serratus. Now let's keep all of that turned on as you inhale behind the chest muscles. Exhale the knees off the ground. Keeping all of that structure working. So we soften the neck. And maybe we can find a more whole bodied breath while this shoulder structure is occupied. <laughs> there it is. That's it, Marissa. That's it. That's cool. So how do I thoroughly occupy this shoulder structure? Press. <laughs> so I'm using my muscles. I'm using my strength. And I'm finding new ways to breathe. Yes. Now, left foot smoothly raise the left leg from the ground. And as you reach back, press through the arms, getting lighter through shoulders. Now we'll switch sides. We're bringing that left foot down in exchange. Right leg reaches up. Now inhaling into that right low back, right back pocket. Exhale, move that leg out. Send it out. Press through the shoulders, getting lighter through the shoulders. And stay connected to breath. Inhaling, let's set that right foot down to the ground. Softly set the knees down. It's not complete and total rest. Slide those hands under your shoulders. And on your next exhale, we'll press back downward dog. Kind of a rest, kind of not. Now moving the bottom tips of shoulder blades around, meaning apart from one another. Can you feel your breath in the mid back, right in the middle of the back, bottom of the heart? Can you feel your breath under those spine bones, spine muscles? You've had some muscular splinting, and there might be one or two of us with some rib, rib bruise or such. Can you feel breath gently saturating that strain or that bruise area in the ribs? Inhale, step your left foot forward, warrior two. We arrived. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> Reaching arms out to the side. Feet active. Do a little kite hawk. Kite hawk are these arm or shoulder rotations. And we pair them with the breath. So you can, again, 
feel if there's any little hitch or glitch or change in your breath quality. So I inhale, turn the palms up. My chest lifts, my upper back lifts a smidge. Exhale, roll the thumbs down, the arms turn inwardly. And I also tip the chin down, just so I can feel that upper kind of thoracic, upper back area. We'll do a bunch more. Inhale is the up move. That's palms up, chest lifts, articulates. Exhaling is thumbs down, so I'm rolling the arm bones inwardly. I'm also tipping the head down. Two more. Noticing the quality of your breath in and through the shoulders. This is also a little bit of a segmental thing where we're feeling each of those neck and upper back bones, feeling them move or how they're wedded together. Reverse warrior, inhaling, bring the head over the chest. Exhale the right hand to the right leg, raise the left arm. And using this left arm to lift the ribs, the guts, away from the pelvis. Now, sense. What's your breath like in the left low back? That's it, Kat, that's it. So you're feeling that left half of your pelvis soaked with breath. Inhale, come up right. Let the arms just hang out for a moment in front of you. One more pose, reach the right hand behind your back. Either, either going half archer or full archer. I use my left hand to nudge the right arm up. Hopefully that's an easy move, good on the shoulder. Now some of you with the shoulder situations, you may want to just keep your left hand there and just hold the right hand uh, securely. If you have that ability or desire to work archer, left hand reaches over the left shoulder. Inhaling into back of heart. Exhaling, sink softly, the tailbone down. And while we're accessing this left hip, these active foot, speaks into the hip, and of course the hip informs how our spine moves, especially that upper thoracic area. In this final deep breath, feel that upper back, the back of the heart, the left shoulder blade area getting breathed. Mm -hmm. It's like every little bone, every little cell, every little rib muscle is getting breath and motion nourished. Release the hands. Inhale, we'll set them down beside our left foot. Exhaling, step back, and we lower all the way down to the ground. Ground, sweet ground. Cobra, shift the tailbone toward the earth. Inhale, abdomen into the ground, pulling the chest bones, lift forward. Exhale, lower, downward dog. Neck very soft. 
take two additional breath moments here. Neck soft. With all of these little waves that we're playing and perturbating the, the way we typically carry ourselves, our spine, it's worth relaxing the neck. It's worth finding that spine, that neck ease. Warrior two, inhale right foot forward. We reach those arms out to the side. We're working those rotations or kite hawk. So inhaling, I turn the palms up. I'm filling and feeling and lifting this whole mid and upper chest. Exhale, rolling the thumbs down, turning the arm bones inwardly. And as the chin goes down a little bit, I keep pressing those fingertips out. Let's do three more on our own. Inhaling, when we come back upright, it's for a reverse warrior. Left hand to left leg, right arm reaches up. Exhaling, lift. Feel that midfoot and that heel descending into the mat, into the earth. So you may have to kind of let some of that leg weight melt down. That right leg weight. There you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it, Marissa. That's it. There you go. Sometimes that little wobbly scenario we get into, sometimes it's, I think, it's really valuable to just let the nervous system, let the body learn its way through. So if you're trying to stop or stifle the, the wobbliness, we might consider that might be a prime learning moment where we're learning to support ourselves with authentic breath support. Right? This would be a, maybe a different kind of strength for us. Now we inhale, draw that right arm up and over. As we come up right, we're working archer half or full. Start with the left hand behind the back. Use the right hand to either help it up or just to support it exactly where it is. If you like, the right arm reaches over the right shoulder. Yes, there might be differences left side to right side. I just want to appreciate those differences. And just using breath to appreciate and go, oh, right? Because we're slowing all of this down to appreciate what is occurring in our body. The many signals our body sends us, the way our body perceives opens to more information, resists more information, that's important to know. And release, inhale, let those arms down. 
and we'll set those hands down around the right foot, exhaling chaturanga. Step right foot back. Please, let's lower all the way down. Cobra, reach back through those inner legs. Inhale, move the low back away from the thighs, the mid spine away from the low spine. Exhaling lower, downward dog. Soften neck. We're going to do it every time we can remember. Softening the neck. Deep breath, but soft, soft neck. So we encourage a whole body breath. Not just a neck breath, not just a shoulder breath. A whole body breath. Extended warrior. Inhale, left foot forward. So the warrior two stance. Now extended is we're reaching the right arm overhead. Now this left hand, you may like putting on a bit of elevation. Why would I elevate my left hand? In case something felt really compressed uh, in my hip, or my back, okay? So you have to decide if this feels like a good depth to be or if you need to press out a little bit. And we'll go with the feet active. And so we'll go left hand down here. I wanna get this whole right side on, on this gorgeous, Stretch so uh, that right foot's turned in a little bit, which, yes, we all got. And pressing out through that right heel. Now, as I press out through that right heel, that front of thigh lengthens. As I wrap that right shoulder, it actually helps relax exactly some of those muscles like the traps around the right side of my neck. So I'm pressing my right hand fingertips as deeply away from my right heel as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. Good, and as you're pressing here, and get that, yeah. <laughs> There it is. Now that leg working like so. We'll grow this, grow this forward almost like, ooh, heel, where'd you go, heel? There you go. <laughs> mm-hmm, and just keep contact with me here like you're stomping on me. Good, reach all the way through those right hand fingertips. Push me here, heel, yes. Good, inhale, bring that right hand down to the ground. Now when we exhale the left foot back, set the knees down. There's a block that you will place right between your ankles and then we'll complete our lowering down. We're working with the fingertips grabbing the bottom of the butt. So it's a little boat variation. When I grab the bottom of the butt, now I use those very educated butt and leg muscles and I shift the tailbone, I shift the pelvis. Inhale, grow the low back away from those fingertips, the mid back away from the low back. Exhaling, pull with those fingertips, elbows lift slightly toward the sky. Feel what that does in the chest. Deep breath into the chest bones. And release. 
Inhale, hands under chest. Exhaling, downward dog. And we'll just scooch around that block as we inhale our right foot forward for extended warrior, other side. Our right hand is on the inside of our right foot. Now, if you've done some other styles of yoga, you may have set it up on the outside. We're setting it up on the inside. I find that it's a great kind of moment for so many of us who have those rotator cuff injuries where we get to sneak in a little bit of our PT work right there. We kind of can engage that right armpit and you just get to keep letting your yoga be a complement to your, your therapies. Yeah. So inhaling into that left side, hip, waist, how would this be if we turned that foot? Inhale, left hand down to the ground. <laughs> Your left side has been thoroughly extended. <laughs> Exhale, step that right foot back. There's a block there. <laughs> we lower down, hugging our best friend with our ankles. <laughs> Groaning with our best friend between our ankles. <laughs> Bow with, uh, uh, pardon me, boat variation. Fingertips grab the bottom of the butt once again. <laughs> so glad to be back in person. You can hear all these sounds. Let's turn on those inner legs, getting that block compressed. Now I compress the block, but I lengthen my inner thighs. Inhale, lift up. Exhaling, keep those inner thighs on. Those inner thighs lead right up to the fingertips. You can probably feel those inner thighs working under your fingertips. And release. Inhale, hands under chest. Exhaling, downward dog. Soften through the neck. There we go. Jaw, eyes, ears. Now, having softened, connect to breath. We're finding that authentic support that comes from a whole body breath that we're getting as we relax the neck, we relax the jaw, we relax the eyes. We're setting up half moon. Inhale, left foot forward. Half moon, you can use a block for your left hand as we draw the right heel hip height. Now for the meanwhile, I'm enjoying my thumb and forefinger on my right hip. And this way I can press just like I was doing in bridge, I press my tailbone shifts toward my right heel. I press my chest bones lift away from my hips forward.
So from my right heel to my right armpit, breathing, stretching those points apart, all the way to the right armpit. That's it, that's it, Kat. Extend or lift the chest away from you. Mm hmm. Good. Press the heel away from the heart. Lift the heart away from that right heel. Yeah, it's like another extended warrior. There it is. Sweet. And inhaling, set that right foot down for a moment. Place the right knee down, lots of padding. We're setting up a lunge, so cushion up that right knee. There's a, yeah. All right. Right hand, grab right foot. Now, just like we'd done in bridge, I'm gonna get a loose grab and a really strong butt support. My butt <coughs> leads my tailbone at my heel, and then I can always adjust my right foot in, my lunge forward. So I just get a loose grab, and then I operate the butt. There you go. <laughs> kind of like bridge. Yes. And so you may feel that a lot more up the front of the quad with that, um, those butt muscles working. Can you feel your breath in this right side abdomen, this right side pelvis? Lift the low back away from that left heel. There you go. Now, when we set that right foot down, just know that we're going into quarter moon. So let me just show you where we're going, and then you can, we can go there together. I'll be stepping right back up onto my left leg, grabbing the right foot, just like we were a moment ago. So when you're ready, I just want you to press that right knee off the ground, step onto that left foot, Right hand, grab right ankle. Now, if you can't grab the ankle here, it's okay. You can grab a pant leg or we can just work another iteration of half moon. Same thing, butt muscles. Mm-hmm. If I get those butt muscles contracting, that's it, that's it. And I reach that thigh bone away from my nose. Mm -hmm. Inhale the chest away from the thigh bone. Good. And press out through that. Yep. There it is. There it is. Good. Now carefully let that foot go. And we'll inhale, placing it down on the ground. Move as smoothly, as elegantly as you will. Exhaling, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Now press those tops of feet down very firmly. Those inner legs, those butt muscles engaged, pulling the chest forward. Exhaling, downward dog. 
Three poses. Here we go. Inhale, right foot forward, half moon. So I bring the left heel hip height. Quite vigorous with that reach of left heel back. Yes. And with that, that vibrant outreach, now I'm inhaling the chest forward. I got something to play with there. Good. And we've been doing these getting these breaths into the upper back, under the shoulder blades, under the chest wall. Leading that chest, the heart away from that heel, the heel reaches away from heart. Now inhaling softly, softly, set that left foot down. Pad the left knee as we prepare for lunge, heel to butt. <laughs> All right. So again, I grab a, a loose grab and I engage the butt. And then I can always go in further. And essentially, we're, we've kind of removed one of our primary stabilizing features, one of our feet. We've just taken it out of the equation. Note what happened to your breath. Excellent. There you go. We're going to regroup, re rediscover that authentic, whole-bodied breath, that breath that reaches the left side waist and the pelvis. There it is. There it is. Release. We set that left foot down. We're getting ready for quarter moon. So, one, I press my left knee off the ground. Press that left foot off the ground. And re-grab a left foot with left hand. From hip to heart. Can you feel your breath from hip to heart? Left hip to left heart. And release. Carefully, carefully set that left foot down. 
Inhaling, set the hands down. Exhaling, we step that right foot back. Set the knees down, and let's have a little chat about where we might go. We are lowering to the ground, but before we do, we're working bow without a strap. Sometimes, can I borrow this for a moment? You'll want a little extra layer under your hips. Some people, if you're depending on your mat or the, the flesh around your hips, you might just want a little extra padding. Um, so that could be a nice, a nice add-in. So that's item one. Item two is I'm grabbing the ankles. And it's a very strong tailbone shift down into the earth. It's almost like I'm trying to magnetically connect tailbone down. And I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit, but it really does change the low back. Now I reach with the legs so I can lift my chest up. My feet pull my chest up. Now, those of you working with some low back tenderness, you may not love this move so much. So here's some ideas. Roll under belly. So by putting the roll under the belly, you protect uh, uh, the low back a great deal more. Two, you might just choose bridge up a wall if you're really tender or you have some ideas, right? So let's get into bow. And decide if you need some cushion under your hips or a roll under your abdomen. It's been a while since we uh, did some bow. Time to dust off the classics. <laughs> okay. All right. So everything's accounted for. When I grab the ankles, a typical first approach I like is thumbs down. So I'm grabbing the outer ankles, thumbs point down. There is another version, but you just have to be mindful of your elbows, and if you hyperextend, you may not love that one. All right, here we go. Shift the tailbone down into the earth. Yeah, if you just want to do cobra over a roll, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. Inhale, use the legs to pull the knuckles back. You don't have to come all the way up, but we're going to sustain what we can. Exhaling the thighs, reach back, feet active. Now we're here for a bit, so just connect to breath. I'm feeling breath reach the abdomen and the low back. I get that intra-abdominal pressure by breathing the abdomen into the roll, breathing the abdomen into the ground. I kind of floof up or support my spine. There you go. Now stay with it. You don't have to go deeper, but we're holding this, this amount of backbend. Can you walk that breath up under the diaphragm, under the heart? There you go. Maybe I engage those legs a little bit more, sending the thigh bones back, pressing the feet into the hands. There you go. That's it, Kat. That's it. Nice, Joy. And we can stay really low. That's really wonderful. And we can still get into the chest without having to bend a whole bunch. Let's take two or three more breaths in this first iteration bow. Good. Thigh bones reach back. That's it. Vibrant feet. Yes. The structure of the foot absolutely talks through the hip, talks through the back, talks into the upper back. So do those feet matter to my shoulder? They sure do. <laughs> When you rest, this is your first rest. There's more to come. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
your second round, you have options. Your second round can be identical to your first in that hands grab ankles. You can also choose this variation. Big loop with the strap, both feet in the strap, both hands grab the loop. Now my arms are overhead, so to speak. This puts a very different work through the upper back, okay? So one more iteration of bow. You can do this one of two ways. Again, hands grab ankles, just like we'd done. Or you can get that big old loop. So when you've selected lots of leg energy, lots of hammies and butt muscles, shifting that tailbone toward the earth. And if you wanted to, I don't want to push you, you could do one hand, one foot there. At least you get the... Good. Those of you working with the strap, power to you. Keep those elbows really close to your temples for extra interest. <laughs> nice, Joy, nice. Those active feet help the tailbone. Just take as many more breaths as you need to feel complete up to four or five more. Guide that breath up to the upper back and chest. to exit, just exit smoothly, gracefully, elegantly. We'll just take a moment exactly where you are. <laughs> There's no need to hurry anywhere. onto your back and do a little release and we'll do this in stages so it's as 
kind as, as possible. So first stage, knees bent, feet on ground. Inhaling, use your, your abdomen to guide breath into your back so the back feels connected to the ground. Now as you exhale, draw the belly muscles in and down, yet keep the back on the ground. Inhale into the low belly and low back. Tuck your hands behind your head in case they weren't. This time, as you exhale, lift the head and the shoulder blades off the ground, drawing the belly in and down, feeling the low back connected to the ground. I'm not pulling the head so much as my abdominal pressure keeps the back down and elevates the chest. Pull the low belly down. Good, inhale, set the head down. Now pick only your right foot off the ground, knee over hip. Left foot on earth, right foot is up. Inhale into the, into the low back. And exhale, head and shoulders up, pulling the low belly down. Getting really empty. Now inhale, set the head down, set the right foot down. Pick the left foot up. Exhale, head and shoulders elevate, pulling the low belly down, but feel both halves of your back on the ground. Pull the low belly down. Inhale, set the head down. Pick both feet off the ground. Be a little more abdominal pressure as you inhale into the belly and the back. There you go. Exhale the head and the shoulder blades off the ground. Take this left leg, stretch it away from your belly, straight up. Pull the low belly down away from your toes, straight down. Inhale, bend the left knee, set the head down. But breathe the back to the ground for these, these few moments more. Exhale, float the head and the shoulder blades up. Reach the right leg up. Pull the low belly down away from the foot. Reach the foot away from the belly. Inhale, set the head down, bending the knees. You get a free exhale. And last bit around. Inhale, the head and shoulders up. Keep them up. Curl tailbone, exhale the left leg up. Straight up. Pull that low belly down, way down. Internally rotating that left thigh. Inhale, bend that left knee, keep the shoulders up. Curl tailbone, exhale, right leg reaches up. Internally rotate that right thigh, pull that low belly down. Inhale, keep the shoulders up. Do the last one on each side on your own. Just getting lots of breath moving into the sacrum, the low back. Getting those low belly muscles, very expressive post back bend. Part of that intra-abdominal pressure helps the spine be authentically supported so that breathing the back to the ground is part of that. Once you're through, you can either grab onto your legs, hugging them close to chest, or happy baby if you love that, but choose a back release move of your preference. Now one that allows you to continue breathing into your back. I usually like one that kind of relieves the hips, the tissues around the butt and the hips. And when you release, 
peace. It's time we take Shavasana, so. When you set your feet down, know that you have lots of back rest options. You can tent your knees together, bent. You can put your legs up a wall, if you're kind of L-shaped. You can tuck some blanket behind your kneecaps. But just so long as you are able to rest in a way that feels comfortable to your spine, because we literally are cooling down in these moments. And if we've gotten warm, that kind of gelatinous, warmed gelatinous matrix does start to thermally change. So this is kind of like the remembering process. Resting will help me remember these states of body and these states of mind and states of respiration later. Explore how your breath feels through your entire core and heart. We did this as a baseline in the very beginning. So when you're ready, bend knees. We'll turn to a side. And we'll use both hands to press to seated. Namaste.